I'm Mike Jones. Um, exciting time to be talking about uh, what we think is the best palladium uh, undeveloped asset in the world. Uh, it's one that we discovered. Um, we had quite a tough time in platinum mining in South Africa as Anglo and Impala shrunk their operations conventionally. We're very lucky that we found a, a major deposit that's dominated by palladium. Standard disclosure cautions on forward-looking statements and we're listed in Toronto and New York, so uh, our technical information can be found on CDAR or EDGAR in the U.S. Two components to the company, which is interesting. We, most of the value, obviously, is in the 19.5 million ounces of reserves that we have at Waterberg. Um, there's a 33 million ounce uh, resource, and it's 63% palladium, 29% platinum, 6% uh, gold, and sadly, only 1.5% rhodium. It's the only thing that God did that was unkind is only gave us 1.5% rhodium. Could use some more rhodium. Um, construction decision is going to happen now uh, this, this year, early this year. Um, it's $165 million potential investment from Implats. They currently own 15% uh, of this asset, which they bought for $30 million before we completed the feasibility study together. I won't have any time to talk about Lion Battery Technologies, but it's also owned by Platinum Group Metals 52% and owned 48% by Anglo-American. They did issue their own press release about the formation of this company. And it has all the intellectual property around putting PGMs in a lithium battery. If you think about it, a battery is a chemical reaction in a box. Why wouldn't a good catalyst improve the performance? And it turns out that it does. Um, so we're busy with that as a private subsidiary. As I mentioned, some big milestones happening right now. Um, our mining right, we expect to be granted uh, any day. We've completed 135 public meetings and we've filed 80,000 pages of documents over two years, so it's been a lot of work. Um, all the key components of the project are in place. Um, the Impala option was set in motion by the approval uh, unanimously by the joint venture December 5th. That gives them 90 business days to elect to whether step up and take control of the project. Um, the decline establishment under our feasibility study we've set as a milestone for Q1 2021 um, there is some opportunity to pull that forward with early engineering, and we're looking at that right now. Startup production is January, uh, beginning of January 2024. What's different about this, this deposit is that it's unique, obviously, in its metal balance, but it's also thick. Um, the stopes on the central Super F, um, named by, after Frank over there, he's the first guy to see it in the core. Um, when the CFO can see the deposit in the core, you know it's really obvious. Um, sorry, Frank, I always say that. Um, it's shallow, it's 140 meters from surface, um, and it makes a very desirable concentrate that's a good replicate for, uh, for Marensky concentrate um, going through a smelter. Where it's located is off the north end of the north limb. We always get asked the question, how can this be? Um, how can there be a quarter of a billion tons of PGM resources sitting there for 80 years? The reason is it's under 100 meters of sedimentary cover. That's what kept it, you know, kept it hidden. And uh, we were very fortunate we hit on the third drill hole into this new lobe of the Bushveld complex. We, we have about 1,000 square kilometers of land position. Um, and the most profitable platinum mine in the world is also in our area, the Mahalaquena mine, which will probably get another expansion coming up um, later this year. Here's really the economic outcome of being uh, thick and bulk. So some interesting stats here from uh, compilation work we did for the industry. The conventional platinum mines are producing two to three ounces per employee per month. You can just imagine long term that's not going to work. The mechanized mines in the Eastern Limb and Zimbabwe, uh, Stillwater, North American Palladium, all on that uh, chart, are producing about five to eight ounces per employee per month. That can work. But at the bottom end are the bulk deposits, including the far left, which is Mahalaquena. So that's producing at 40 ounces per employee per month and Waterberg is at about 30. So our stopes are 40 meters high, they're 20 meters by 20 meters, and in every blast we drop a 13-story office building. So that's why it works. This is just a quick head-to-head -head comparison, as many of you will know. North American Palladium was bought by Impala for $750 million in cash, um, also a dominantly Palladium asset. Um, they paid about $216 a reserve ounce, and our current market cap is 13. And on every measure, including mine life grade, all in sustaining cost, we beat North American Palladium. 
This is from Impala's annual report. Their portfolio of mines shown in where they are in the cost curve and their depth. And this is their view of where Waterberg would sit. It would be the lowest cost mine in their portfolio. Don't have time to talk much about the palladium market except people think it's moved up fast. Um, this is a, sh a sign of the growth in the palladium market based mostly on hybrids. And we're seeing a, a large increase in, in interest in hybrids. Anglo-American has a very similar chart on number of cars, expecting about 20% of the auto fleet to be hybrid. And those have high temperature, high compression ratio, small gasoline engines, and all of those need palladium uh, uh, catalysts. Because of our palladium dominance, that's what our basket price has done. It's currently sitting at $1,900. We have some great investors at the asset level, including Jogmec, the Japanese government, and Hanwha. Our newest share shareholder and is now our largest shareholder, Hoskin Consolidated here in uh, Cape Town. They own the Cullinan Hotel, amongst other things. Um, and they've been a great supporter of the company, and they're now up to about 32% of the stock. 420,000 ounces a year is our steady state production, $640 an ounce cash cost compared to the basket sitting right now at about 1,900. The maximum uh, NPV that we had in the feasibility study on sensitivities was 1.5 billion, 20% up. We're currently sitting about 30% up in our basket, so the NPV at an 8% discount rate after tax is about 2.1 billion currently and the IRR is currently sitting at about 32% after tax. We do apologize for the short mine life. Um, it's only 45 years. <laughs> Just seeing if anybody's listening. Um, those are our ownership interests. Um, and where the rubber hits the road here is, um, generates at our feasibility prices about $210 million a year of after tax cash flow for 45 years. Um, at current pricing, it's about $300 million a year in after-tax cash flow. Project timeline, we expect our mining rate any day, which would put us in production in January 2024 and steady state in January 2027. $617 million in peak funding. Our share capital structure, um, we have about 65% of our stock in our top three shareholders. Um, we have 65 million shares fully diluted, traded in New York and Toronto, as I mentioned. We do have some debt. Uh, we paid off $100 million of our misadventure uh, in platinum um, and conventional. And we still have a $20 million secured credit line with Sprott and a $20 million convert. Um, but that debt is very flexible, takes us out to 2022, and we fully expect to be well into construction by that time. And we can deal with that at that time with some great institutional shareholder support. So we're trading at about 14% of our NAV8 with a construction decision right in front of us. The upcoming milestones include the mining right and the construction decision in a $165 million election by Impala. And it has, this mine has the potential to be one of the largest low cost PGM mines in the world at the right time for palladium. Thanks very much.